Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this time I'm going to have a look at isolating transformers. And we've got one here, which is the one that's uh, quite often used when uh, testing various bits of unknown electrical equipment. And it's a yellow box here. And on the end of this lead, we've got just normal mains plug there, the 13 amp variety. And then on the front of the device, we have a normal main socket, also of the same type. And in theory, you could actually plug that in there, although that uh, wouldn't actually do a great deal. But of course, what you're supposed to do is plug this in the mains, and then you plug the device uh, that's uh, dubious or questionable into the front of it. So let's see how these things work, and why you might actually want to use one. Now, all electricity essentially is going to be supplied from a transformer of some kind, and generally that's going to be located out in the street or in a cupboard or uh, on a stick at the end of the farm driveway or whatever. But uh, in any case, uh, it's going to have a uh, winding such as uh, that. And then, of course, we've got the other side of the transformer, which would come in from the higher voltage network of electricity. And if you're in the UK, then it's going to be in the region of 240 volts. So you have uh, 240 volts AC between those two incoming connections. And because of the way that these were arranged, the one side of the transformer is always actually connected to an earth stake in the ground. And then the two wires that would come in to your property would be the main supply. And uh, the upshot of this is that uh, this one will be called the neutral because of the fact that it's uh, referenced to the ground. And then the line up there. And of course, uh, this also means that if you were standing on the floor here and a wire happens to touch your fingers, then you're going to get an electric shock because the current can flow from the transformer here through the line conductor, into your body, through your body and through your heart and effectively killing people, into the ground and it returns to the transformer. And of course so that's why you always get an electric shock if you put your fingers into a live outlet. And pretty much all electricity supplies in this country and in fact most countries across the world are arranged in this fashion. So 99% of the cases you're going to poke your fingers on the live wire and then you're going to kill yourself. Now, of course, this is not particularly desirable, although, of course, in normal circumstances, you uh, wouldn't be doing any of those things. Now, an isolating transformer is actually very similar, but the difference is that there is no connection or reference to ground whatsoever. So, we'll just go on to a new page. What you've got in terms of that little yellow box there, you've got the main supply that comes in, and it's actually going in to one side of a transformer. And then we've got your sort of iron core or whatever. And coming in here is the 240 volts. And we'll call that the neutral and the live. So 240 volts between those two. And this side of the transformer is, of course, reference to ground, just as the rest of the electricity system is. But the output of the transformer, as in the little socket on the front, is the same type of winding, so same number of turns and whatever. So here we still get 240 volts between the two wires. But the difference is that the output here, there's no connection for this to the actual ground down here. And this means that uh, if someone was standing here on the floor, if they were unfortunate enough to uh, touch either this wire or even this wire, as long as it's only one of those wires, nothing will happen. If this one was touched here, then their body is going to be whatever potential this is. However, because there's no connection here to the ground at all, there's no path for the current to, to return to, so again nothing happens. And again, if you touch this side, well, again nothing happens because this is completely isolated. The only connection between the mains here and the output is a magnetic coupling, so there's no actual electrical connection there whatsoever. And this means that if you have one of these isolating transformers powering a piece of equipment, if something goes wrong with the equipment and you happen to come into contact with one of the conductors, then it doesn't give you a shock and certainly doesn't kill anybody. And these were quite often used for things like television repairs, where it was necessary to have the television set open and powered to make various adjustments and measurements. But of course, this uh, connection via a transformer gives the additional safety because although you're going to be careful if you're putting your fingers in the back of a television, and we're talking uh, old type uh, CRT televisions here, then uh, of course, it's easy just to slip onto the exposed metalwork and uh, give yourself an electric shock. And a lot of older televisions had uh, live chassis, which basically means that all of the metal parts inside were connected to full mains voltage. So just brushing against some metal component could give you a deadly electric shock. 
so hence the uh, use of the transformer certainly improves safety in that regard. And you've seen I've used it quite often in other things, certainly when powering up dubious pieces of equipment and even things that are just being demonstrated here on the bench. And that's again mainly for the fact that uh, of course you're going to be careful and not touch the wires but it just gives that additional level of safety so that if you did happen to come into contact with one then you're not going to get an electric shock. However these things are not perfect and they're certainly not the sort of thing you want to shove in and then be careless with because although it's isolated from the ground if you were coming in contact with both, so say for example a lead trail down here and contact with your leg and then another lead trailed here and accidentally came in contact with your arm then yes you're going to get the full mains voltage shock from it because again you've now completed the circuit so the power can then come from the transformer through there and then return via the other wire. So they're certainly capable of giving people shocks and in the case of this one 240 easily capable of killing people. It's just the benefit of you have to actually touch both of these to get a shock rather than just one. And another old rule is to only use one hand at a time when actually looking at things so Again, the risk of contacting both then is extremely small. So that's primarily what they're used for. It's essentially an initiative safety feature, certainly when working on live equipment, or in the case of stuff from uh, other countries, I'm sure you can guess which one, then just to make sure that if there is something fatally wrong with it, like they've wired up the earth to the live pin or something stupid, then uh, so they're sure you're not going to get a shock from it. But so they're not uh, foolproof by any means, it's just an additional thing to have doesn't mean you can just poke your fingers in there anytime you like. And another situation where these are useful is if you're going to use a piece of test equipment such as an oscilloscope. Here's an oscilloscope of the old variety. Oh, I've actually got one of these up on the shelf there. Now oscilloscopes have uh, usually BNC connectors on the front here. And that's where you attach your probes to uh, test whatever piece of equipment you're actually poking about with. And of course oscilloscopes are mains powered pieces of equipment, so you've got your mains lead will come off here to the wall outlet. Now if the thing you're probing here with the probe, we'll just put an arrow there, it's not really a probe, but you know what a probe looks like from the oscilloscope. Now if this is a battery powered item then of course no problem because uh, this is again a totally isolated system and it might be powered from your uh, lithium power pack or something here. So not a problem at all. However if you're going to power something from the mains that you're going to be probing then this can open up a nasty situation. So the oscilloscope of course is connected to the mains and oscilloscopes generally being made of metal will have an earth connection. So the earth connection will go through to the main socket and we'll just draw that in green here. So that will go into the earth pin of the plug and of course that will go back to the rest of the earthing in the rest of the building. And on virtually all oscilloscopes the metal covering of the output plugs here or the sockets is also connected to mains earth. Now this is generally a good thing but uh, in this particular case it's uh, not what you actually want. So you're actually connecting the output here back to mains earth in the plug and because of this your probe is in there. The little black lead that comes off of here from the for the negative or black connection there that is also connected to mains earth back here. So if your item of equipment here is mains powered and then you've got the mains coming in here so you've got say your line and neutral. And bearing in mind most things these days are main to power to so the LED lamps and whatever like that. Then if you connect this green pin here and it goes on to the neutral well that's not a problem and then you can just probe around with the probe as often as you like. But if you were then to connect this piece the little black uh, clip lead and you connect it onto part of the circuit which was the live then essentially you've shorted out the mains through your oscilloscope. So a huge amount of current is going to flow through here, blow up the oscilloscope and flames will pour out of the front and it may destroy the uh, oscilloscope in the process. Fortunately you might have a fuse in the uh, plug here that's powering this equipment which might blow but not before it's done a fair amount of damage to the equipment here. Big burn mark on the front of it and the oscilloscope may not work anymore. And of course uh, this is very easy to do because if you're poking about inside you just need to put that lead on the wrong terminal and suddenly it's a big boom and uh, that's the end of the equipment and the oscilloscope as well. And this can easily be avoided by rather than powering this from the mains, powering this from 
yes, the isolating transformer, which means then you don't have this connection here directly to the mains. It's again a totally isolated system, so it doesn't matter what you're doing inside there. There's no actual mains connections inside, even though the voltage is, of course, at the mains potential. And that's the proper way to do it, is to power the item you're testing from the isolating transformer. The thing you do not want to do is power the oscilloscope from the isolating transformer, because although that would effectively have the same result for a single piece of equipment, as soon as you start connecting multiple pieces here, you've got the same problem again, in that you could end up shorting out between different bits of equipment or whatever. And again, it also gives a false sense of security here, so if something goes wrong with the oscilloscope, and then the metal case becomes live with reference to the transformer, then of course you're not going to know about it. So it's far better to power the item under test from the isolating transformer, not the piece of test equipment. And the other stupid thing that some people may have done, and probably have, is to cut off the earth wire inside completely, but of course that's ridiculously dangerous because then any fault here means the oscilloscope's live and then probably the rest of your workbench equipment is live as well. That's a very quick and easy way to ensure that you kill yourself. And we'll just go back to this diagram just finally. The fact that you can get a shock from connecting it on two points of your body from the transformer is significant. But this means if you're going to have two pieces of equipment that you're going to be testing, then you really need two isolating transformers, one for each piece of equipment. Because if you don't, and you power them both on the same equipment, then you've got that same issue again where you could easily contact two different points within the different bits of equipment, particularly if there's like data cables or something going between the pieces of equipment you're testing, and you could end up shorting out across the isolating transformer and causing something to be destroyed. And equally, you could easily get a shock from it because then you've got two pieces of equipment, sort of one here and one here. Both have uh, the isolation coming in, and again you touch one here, and it might be the other polarity on this one, and it's just uh, wide open for problems and causing injury. So uh, it's one isolating transformer for one piece of equipment under test, and if you happen to have two on the simultaneously, one isolating transformer here, and another one for this one. These are also used in bathrooms, by the way, and uh, that's where you plug your shaver in, certainly in the UK, and it's exactly the same reason so you don't get a shock from the item if you happen to touch one of the conductors. And for the same reason, that's why you don't get double outlet shaver sockets, because again, if you had two shavers or toothbrushes plugged in, you then got uh, two items you could touch, and the uh, risk of being uh, electrocuted, of course, again, is very high. So a quick look there, isolating transformers and uh, the situations in where you might want to use one. And if you want to get one of these, then uh, it's worthwhile just having a look around for second-hand ones or used ones, because bearing in mind it's just a transformer, there's not really anything that can go wrong. And uh, new ones, of course, can be obtained, but they tend to be fairly expensive, so worthwhile having a look to uh, get a cheap uh, second-hand one. Uh, this one was done like £10 or something, and uh, fairly easy to pick up locally. Certainly don't want to have it delivered because they're extremely heavy and the cost of delivery will probably be more than the thing itself. And uh, while we're on the transformer situation, it's worth pointing out that these things are not isolating transformers. These things were the uh, building site type power tools. And you've got your 240 inlet here on the plug. And then the outlet is 110, and it's centre tapped to earth. So effectively you've got two lots of 55 volts on the two terminals. But it is still connected to the ground, so if you were to uh, poke your finger in one of the holes, then yes, you will get a shock from it. That's uh, simply how it's been designed. And the point of these is to make sure that the maximum difference between yourself and the ground, if you were, say, holding a power tool, is only that 55 volts. So if you do get a shock from it, then, of course, 55 volts is almost certainly not going to kill anybody. And in most cases, they're not going to cause any injury either. And obviously, it's much safer than the 240 volts or whatever in the normal case. But say so they're not isolating transformers, and the output is certainly referenced to ground in the usual fashion. So uh, certainly uh, don't use one of those for that, but uh, if you want to get one of those for other purposes, then by all means do so, but just bear in mind that it's not an isolated output. And as with the others, you can get these very cheaply for like five, ten pounds or something second hand, and although buying them new is certainly an option, it's uh, much cheaper just to, uh, say, find one locally that's being disposed of. So uh, until next time, thanks for watching.